Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for uh, Wednesday, the 16th of November, 2016. Remember, this is Wednesday of Options Expiration Week in November. Sorry about that once again. Uh, here's a look at the ES Front Month Daily Chart. This is the Broad Market Futures in daily form. Still very narrowly contained. Hasn't been doing much at the broad market level here for almost a week again. Uh, we did get a new high for the week. I've got the late in the session here. When you look at the intraday action, we'll show you that uh, in a few minutes. But overall, it really doesn't mean much. We haven't gone very far. We're not at new highs yet. And of course, maybe we can print one. We're only got about uh, 14 points to go until we cross the highs from back in August. Maybe they want to print new highs in the markets. Here's a look at uh, crude oil down eight cents to 50, 45.72. Gold back up seven dollars and twenty cents, still near recent lows. Basically, S and P cash index twenty one eighty is the close of the session, up sixteen for the day. NDX up sixty two. A big part of this was the gap. Uh, we'll look at the intraday action in a minute. Socks up fifteen. There is a new closing high on the socks. Biotechs. On the other hand, down 19. So the stuff that has been up is down. Stuff that has been down is up. VIX loses back a buck 11 going into the third. This is really disappointing, by the way, to see the VIX retreating like this. We want volatility back, not the other way around. Um, the trend is interesting. So we, the trend was much higher most of the day, but when we rallied in the last hour, but uh, the trend dropped to 1.07 for the close. Now, I was wrong last night when I said there was a big number coming off the trend, 10-day moving average of 1.3. That's actually now exactly 10 days back. So the number that dropped off was a 0.8 number, and uh, now we're getting a 1.07, which still keeps the 10-day moving average of the trend at 0.84. And now, tomorrow, the 1.3 number will drop off, which means anything under 1.3 brought into the average will keep the trend number at, one, at 0.84 or less. And I should point out, by the way, a 1.3 number, which is huge, that's the biggest of the last 10 days. You know, I mean, let's say you got a 0.7 number on the trend. I mean, that could take this trend reading average down to like 0.79, just levels that you just don't see. It almost always leads to a sell-off in the broad market at some point. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens. NASDAQ volume, 1.9 billion shares. This is a big drop-off from the last four days. Kind of like everybody's looking around and going, what do we do now? Uh, NASDAQ vol advanced decline ratio, plus 565. That was what was so interesting today is the market's gapped up. Uh, S&P was up four or five on the open. But the NDX was up like 50, 40, and yet the advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ was negative until the last hour or so. Advanced decline ratio in the New York was plus 13.63. Google gains $21.94. Um, so that's an interesting one right there. Apple gains a buck 40. Still looking at recent lows. Amazon gains 24, still down for recent times. Netflix up 21 cents. Tesla up $2.32, but still down. Uh, TLT, this is the 20 year bonds ETF. Uh, it says up 60 cents. That was a gap up. Actually sold off again late in the day. And we are now, uh, let's see if I go to projection mode now. We're still, so we're 11 bars down towards a 13 buy signal on the bonds. I don't know that you're going to get a bounce. It's more of an exhaustion, but uh, certainly we could get a pause there. And the Dow, who cares, gained 54 more points. We like to show this one now just because the 13 buy signal we had uh, about a week and a half ago. That has propelled this up. Uh, I will go back and look at the S&P Cash Index and point out that we're now, if I go to projection mode, seven bars up towards a new startup phase. So two more days with any gains at all. Actually, don't even need gains. Just holding up above four bars back, and we'll get eight and nine, and uh, you know what that means. So interesting stuff. All right, let's take a look at the intraday action. Five minute candles on the ES. This is fun. So for the first time in a while, we actually had two 13 sell signals on inside of one day on the five minute chart. I can't remember the last time that happened. Uh, so we gapped up a little, very brief pullback, tried higher, went flat all the way for a couple hours into lunch, got the 13 sell signal, pulled back about five points. So that sell signal worked, turned back up, broke the highs again. And then the afternoon run, and including the last uh, three candles, we closed the aftermarket stock trading. So like the 4, 15 p.m. Eastern time candle that closes for futures with another 13 comer signal. <laughs> That's a sell signal right at the close. So by the way, what this means to me is if we gap up a little bit, not huge, nothing that takes us over the pressure thresholds, but if we gap up a little bit, sell off immediately in the market. That's usually what happens when you get that signal. Uh, NASDAQ side, on the other hand, uh, not nearly as interesting. It was stronger early. You can see that there's a big gap here. I mean, this is almost, uh, this is 40 points, 35 points, and then it pushed up. 
But that was the high of the day. So while the broad market made highs later in the day as the bonds sort of sold off, the NASDAQ side actually didn't. It kind of stalled out. Very mixed markets here. Very interesting stuff. All right, so what do we have for economic data uh, on Wednesday and, and whatever else is coming out this week? Uh, Wednesday's got MBA Mortgage Index at 7 a.m. Eastern. PPI an hour before the bell, capacity utilization and industrial production 15 minutes before the bell, the NAHB housing market index at 10 a.m. Eastern time, 10.30 a.m. crude inventories, 4 p.m. net long-term tick flows. We've got a bunch of data on Thursday, no data on Friday. The other thing to remember, again, options expiration for the week, which means options unraveling can occur either Wednesday or Thursday. This will be interesting. Which way are the options positions and what way are they going to take the market from here? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. So where do we look for that? We look for that after the first hour's play on Wednesday. If we don't get an options unraveling move Wednesday, then we look at it after the first hour's play on Thursday. Uh, guys, next week, just a reminder, we've got options expiration this Friday. Then next week, obviously, Monday and Tuesday are the possibilities. Wednesday, people start to head out for the long weekend. Thursday, we're closed. Friday's a half day. We don't come in for trade site on that half day really anymore. Um, it's usually an up day, but it's a half day. Nobody's around. Uh, so we have a two-day week next week, and then, uh, and then we resume we're going into December, December already. Can you believe this? Amazing. All right, charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading Wednesday.